So, um, so the the first bit of the presentation there was what is TPM TPR? What is total process reliability? Total process reliability is a system that gets cross-functional teams at the low level looking at equipment and how you can improve it and at the leadership level looking at systems and why how we can make better decisions about purchasing or buying equipment or maintaining the equipment and it really gets that whole cross-functional uh, organization getting the right decisions happening at the right level it, that's the what it is the why is it important is because little by little improvement by improvement you can affect the reliability of the equipment and affect the output of the equipment in a way that matters to the business. So when I'm dealing with the plant managers, um, you know, getting more parts or getting them more efficiently or reducing the cost is important. When I'm on the shop floor, having the right tool and have, being able to put my hand on the ladder when I go to do the service, uh, being able to have the right spare part, having the right book so I can troubleshoot the machine effectively, it's important. It matters to them in ways that are going to cause them to, to, to want to make the improvements that need to happen. So, so the why has to do with different levels, but, but it's because it matters to the output of the organization at the end of the day. I, I believe that what you're doing with your maintenance system is you're determining how much you're going to invest in maintaining the capacity of your equipment to produce. Stop maintaining, and I don't know, two weeks, six weeks, six months, you'll stop producing. So what you're doing is you're putting enough maintenance activity back in to enable you to get a certain level of reliability out of that equipment. And if you want to increase the reliability, what you're doing is increasing the odds that it will be available to perform its task. That's what you're doing when, you, when you're maintaining. So the principles that we're going to use, uh, kind of the how we want to go about this thing. So whether you just go away from this presentation and start doing this on your own or whether we help you in some way, it's not the point. The point is this, what you need to do is you need to go find ways to detect deterioration earlier on in the cycle. Okay, so find ways to go home and detect that something's deteriorating sooner. Because the sooner you see it happening, the more time you have to respond to it, the better you'll get at, at servicing. The better you'll get at maintaining, the better you'll get at making it happen. Now look, one of the easiest ways to leave this room and go get better at detecting is to get operators tuned into listening better, um, to get maintenance doing better PM activities, right? To, to give them a better standard, a better criteria about what good is. So everybody has PMs. I, I'll venture to say that most everybody has PMs of some sort. But the PMs that I used to work in said check belt, check bearing, check ball screw, right? The PMs that we, we need to have to get standard, repeatable, quality execution is going to be what needs to be done. Check the, bear, check the belt. How am I going to do that using a tensionometer? What is the criteria for good and bad? One sixteenth deflection per foot of belt span. What do I do if I find it bad? Tighten it or turn in corrective or work order to replace it if it's starting to show signs of deterioration. When I, when I apply standardization to maintenance, I will increase the efficiency of the work. So number one, detect it sooner. Number two, we need to raise the bar of the condition of the equipment in many cases. So um, if basically it has to do with restoration, but I think a better way to say it is, is your organization, I don't, know, I don't know where you guys are at right now relative to, to the condition of your equipment, but, but most organizations settle in on an ex, what they'll accept as the level of condition of the equipment that you're going to have out there. And, you know, the first time you walk through the shop, you walk out there and say, man, this place is dirty. And, man, I can't believe there's, there's over-greasing on that bearing. I can't believe there's oil running down the side of that machine. I can't believe there's a pile of product underneath the machine over there. But you know what? Over time, we get used to it and we accept it. And so... I don't know what your particular environment looks like. Uh, by the way, I, I do this in food organizations where it looks perfectly clean, but we still accept levels of deterioration that should not be accepted in our organization. So the first thing I've got to do, uh, number two here, once we see it, the deterioration, number two is I've got to start to restore it, and I've got to raise the expectation about what's acceptable for condition, the condition of the equipment. For example, you wouldn't want to fly on a plane. You go to get on that 
777, and you're going to fly an overseas flight, and you look out at the landing gear, and it's got a drip of hydraulic fluid coming down. Don't worry about it. It's just a little leak. It's not really broken. It's not really causing any problem. But but on a plane, you would be a little bit concerned about that, right? Um, so so what? But yet in our plants, we accept lots of deterioration. When I was doing that work uh, in the the field, the 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 field where all the oil field uh, condition of the equipment was, the, the, the slide I showed you with the bars that showed 28 days mean time between failure to 200 days. That, that basically, what, what, the first thing we had to do was get them to realize that it's not okay to have one belt running the beam pump. It's not okay that when you change one belt, you, you got to change all of them. They're a matched belt set. It's not okay that the, the gearbox is leaking oil. Yeah, it's, it's in the desert. If le oil's coming out, sand's going in. So it, we had to change the expectation, and that's what number two is really about. Number three is about preventing deterioration. So how do we stop those small defects from becoming major problems? Is by correcting them very early in the cycle and by having chronic problem resolution, root cause analysis uh, to, to solve problems.